a very warm welcome back to Carmesden Farm on Farming Simulator 22 for episode 26 with me, Mr. Silly P. I am here pretty much straight off the back of the previous episode. I say straight off the back, I did purchase 12 pallets using a new farm supply pack of fertilizer. Um, I'm putting the last three in now, so I have 60,000 litres. I bought 60,000 litres because the silo. Uh, which is under a container. Is it a container? That I was going to use. Oh, that's a good point. Hmm, maybe I could use one of those. Uh, the one I was going to use was that uh, that one there. Stainless steel fertiliser tank, 60,000 litres. But unfortunately, that it says this silo can be filled with fertiliser. Um... I had a fiddle around with it. It would allow me to buy it directly, but I couldn't put anything into it. It wouldn't. It wouldn't let me put into it for some reason. I mean, it could have been where I placed it, maybe. That was the issue, maybe. Yeah, but anyway, I, I couldn't get it to work. So I don't know why. Um, these can be filled with different products. I suppose I could go down the route of one of those. But then my other thought was, well, I've got a multi-fruit silo, the one that's by um, the cow farm. I might as well use that. I know I initially I said I was supposed to use it as a hayloft and you know that was kind of the purpose of it. I had no intention of having a massive multi-fruit silo. Then that being said, I bought the Omatana ones and I've got pretty much one at every single... got one here haven't I? I'm just sit over the back. Uh, one at each of the main supply points, delivery points for doing big harvest. So I thought I'll just use that. It makes life a lot easier. Now, on the subject of the farm supply pack and I kind of alluded to this, in the previous episode is this <laughs> and we've got the class um, action 800 and the good old GL 860 compactor I'm kind of regretting having done the previous p potato planting because I'm going to be doing some potato planting but not just some potato planting the biggest potato plant I've ever done and when I say the biggest potato plant I don't mean a massive potato plant I mean like lots of potatoes because you know me, you know me and my contracts. Um, oh, there's a fertilising contract there, except um, I took on this one here, sowing on field 13 potatoes, pays a hundred grand. I know, that's amazing. Uh, I'm going to need seed or potatoes now, obviously, with the farm supply pack um, by the Lord. There are no seeds in there, but there are potatoes. I can buy 5,000 litres of potatoes for a grand. So what I'm going to do is fill that up. I'm also going to go in and I'm going to get, or get lease, under auger wagons. All oh, the thing I need to do is my um, sugar beet chopping, don't I, that's in the silo. So I've got the, these standard ones here. But then we've got the modded pack, the sugar beet cutter pack, which I installed. So I can grab any one of these and I can take that up to my silo over by the sugar mill. I can put all that sugar beet into it, chop it and put it back out again. So that sugar beet cutter pack makes life so much easier than just using that, that small, was it 2,000 litre bucket. But the other pack I have that I installed was the, where is it? The manure auger uh, mod. And these are dirt cheap, but these will do manure, potato or sugar beet to overload. I think I'm going to go for the Actually, in all honesty, I'm going to go for that one. I, 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 like, I like the look of the belt on that one. I'm not going to change a thing, apart from the fact I want it on beaten potato. So at least that's going to cost me 1275 Because the price is so low on them, leasing costs on them are incredibly low. So what I'm going to do is the same thing again as I did with the fertilizers just now. I'm going to buy a load of pallets of potatoes, load them into this auger wagon, and then load that up. We'll get the potato planting going. And then every time I need to fill the potato plant up, I'm going to fill it up from there. And it's, like I said, it's like the planets have aligned. All these different things, the, the farm supply pack came out, this manure auger pack came out, and the prices were really, really cheap. And then the potato um, planting contract came up, and I suddenly thought, well, all of those things together makes for a very viable, it's going to take ages, of course it is. But you know me, I don't shy away from those sorts of jobs. That's why I've got my time on times one, not times two, because it's still going to take a long time. I've got some other jobs I want to get done too. I'm away to delivering this fertiliser and put it into storage. 
fact, I've just taken on another fertilising or a fertilising contract. Since we bought our new fertiliser spread, that means we'll get, it will give us a chance to use that. So once I get the potato planting underway, I'll go and grab the fertiliser spreader. Uh, did I fill it up in the last episode? I think I did, didn't I? I bought two pallets and filled it. So that's good to go already with 10,000 litres of fertiliser in it. This I will store. Um, I'm going to put in the... After all the, the fracar with the, um, the um, pallet rack in, and again, it may have been I was using it wrong. I know a lot of people commented to say what I'd done wrong and why it wasn't working and that kind of thing. There was still a problem with it. Like I said, with the egg one, I was putting loads and loads of pallets on there and it was still only showing as 1,399, um, which didn't make a lot of sense to me. So anyway, regardless of that, we've got those little, um, say little, the gar they look like garages. Again, kind of fortuitous. And I know when I did the mod review, I mentioned this. I said, oh, look, you know, this is going to work out really, really handy on Carmston. This is too heavy. I've got my brakes on full and I'm not slowing down. There we go. Oh, that's something to mention as well. My new controller came. It came yesterday. I went for Galactic Purple and it's awesome. And I've got no more of the camera moving on its own. So my other controller was absolutely shot. I think what I'm going to do is um, take it apart and give it a thorough clean. I know you're not supposed to take them apart, but my, my way of looking at it is now, as far as I'm concerned, that other controller's done. It's had it. I've had to replace it. If I take it apart and can't fix it, I'm no worse off. If I take it apart and I manage to fix it, clean it all up and, it get, and it's working, then brilliant. I, I don't have to worry. Uh, the other thing I want to check while we're here is the cows, because a lot of people have been asking about the cows, and we're also going to check on the um, vines. Because since we put in our grapes... There we go, I can put my solid fertiliser into here. And we can come back and get that whenever we want. So as far as vines go, how are we looking? We've got some growth and it looks like we may need to mulch. Look, that looks a lot thicker than it did before. Maybe some mulching is going to be required. Finally. So yeah, we've got a whole, like I said at the end of the last episode, we have got a whole host of jobs that need to be done. Right, let's turn this off on that. Let's go and check on the cows, because something I haven't checked and probably should have done is the slurry situation. Milk, oh, I need to take more milk over to the dairy as well. Oh, man, there's so many jobs to be done. Uh, so, we've got all that still sitting there. We've got the silage bales sitting there, and we've got in our productions, we were turning, we've got our fermenter as well, haven't we? So we've got plenty of silage on the go. Um, we'll check bedding and feed in a moment. Uh, the thing about this is, like, I think I commented to one person, or I think I responded to one person about this. Um, it's all about the prep work. How are we looking for slurry? Ooh, we've got slurry in there. And manure, how are we looking here? Whoa, okay, that's there's a fair bit in there. Have I not got my um, oh yeah, manure pit. 44,016 litres of manure. That's pretty cool. Why is that not coming up? Maybe it won't. Uh, but we can check in here. Uh, let's go down and have a look. Sorry, 48,958 litres. So we've got a fair bit going on. I know I can do it from here as well. Um, chicken's all right. Could probably do with some feed. Sheep. A little bit of water, straw, uh, uh, grass I topped them up with. Cows, yeah. They might need a little bit of straw, but not a huge amount. So, as I was saying, reproduction, we're at 60% at some point in the next couple of months. Um, we'll we'll hit reproduction and we'll double our, our herd up to 100. And that's kind of another point, is making sure in your prep, if you don't prep, you're always behind. So you're always chasing what you need for your cows and then there's this constant work you need to do for the cows if you prep in advance and what I normally do is prep enough stuff that I've got everything I need for the cows I'm going to buy plus more um, on FS19 it was going to be you know yes there would be reproduction if you did um, seasons and, and whatnot but also if you were going to buy more if you intended to buy more then I wanted to make sure I'd had enough if I was going to buy more, then I've got plenty of stuff to make feed. And again, there's that thing of, because 
I don't need to add water anymore. There's no water runs backwards and forwards like daily or every other day or every few days. Um, and the same with no cleanup because on a lot of the standard in game stuff, and there are some now that are coming out that require a bit of cleanup, there's no animal feed cleanup. So every day I would come in, I would scrape out and clean up. You know, there's either no manure to clean out, or there's no feed areas to clean out. That takes away another job you would normally be doing. Um, but because I've prepped everything in advance and prepped enough, I'm not playing catch up. I'm ahead of myself. So the cows just kind of look after themselves. There's not really a lot else I need to do. We've got 14,375 litres of milk, according to that. Everything's golden. I, honestly, I don't have to worry. And that was all because I did the work in advance. So um, apologies to those people that wanted want to see more of the cows. I mean, that, that's just that's just unfortunately the way it is. So uh, the other job I was going to do was... We're going to get back over and grab the potato plant and get that sorted out. I'm going to grab... I think I'll... Um, actually, I've got the John Deere on it, haven't I? No, it doesn't matter. I'll take this over. I was going to buy one of the new um, auto load trailers, wasn't I? The one that looks like the Berkman. The Berkman that I previously bought. I have closed the doors on that now. <laughs> um, oh, yeah, here. I mentioned this as well jobs that needed doing. I got rid of the shelter after my last like after I made the mistake with the pallet rack in and whether that was my mistake or not or whatever the problem was. Um, I built a shelter here and then again fortuitously something came out. So if we go to our silos and we will go along to these ones here, 10 grand, storage shed four. If we go along we'll get to one that says honey storage shed. Click on that and we should oh, do it there. There we go bang on what it says it's going to cost because I leveled that ground out 10 grand I'm going to store my honey in here I'll put it will put three out there it's under storage and the rest are all going to here and that way I'm not taking it all over and putting it into the, the big building over there to bring it all out again so and I oh, did I mention as well I put in another there we go so we've got more bees in I've been I've been I've been a busy bee I've had a lot of work to do so yeah so that's good that's now in I was meaning to do that, um, and yeah, I need to. I, I need to cut that sugar beet. I'm not sure what to do about that. Oh yeah, I've still got the John Deere on the um, spreader. Do I want to swap it for this? I don't really know at the moment. Could do. Or should I just leave the John Deere on it? Well, generally speaking, I use the John Deere for doing the um, sprayer. So you know what? And I do like it, so... I didn't even look. I took on the contract, didn't even look at what field it was. Um, Fertilising, field 17. Okay. Yep, 10,000 litres in it. This will be much quicker than doing it the other way. So, I think what we'll do is... Yeah, I want to get the potatoes going first. I'll get the potatoes going first, and then we'll... Yeah, then we'll get the fertilizer done. Yeah, that's the way around I'm going to do it. If I get time, I'll get onto cutting that sugar beet, but I'm not sure we'll in this episode. And then the mulching of the grass I'll try to get done as well. Maybe that'll be one of those jobs I kind of do in between. I know it all seems a bit frantic, but, you know, I know I haven't got seasonal growth on and, and like I've said so many times before I know a lot of people have got kind of not bent out of shape over it but a few people messaged me and said um, hopefully your next let's play will have seasonal growth on I, I honestly think it doesn't matter it makes no difference I mean I say it makes no difference of course it makes a difference the only difference being that with seasonal growth on there are certain times you can and can't plant certain times you can or can't harvest and certain things that can't be done at certain times of the year i get that with it turned off you can plant and harvest whenever you want so yeah i mean that's a big difference however the, like i said the growth times of the crops are exactly the same so i i'm still in a cycle i'm still in a cycle of prep plant grow harvest and it's still taking four, five, six months for a crop to grow. 
it's not like if you turn seasonal growth off, it's like it was in FS19 where your crops would grow overnight. It, it just is, that's not the case. I, I honestly, it, yes, it is different. I get that it's different, but not massively. Why did I come down here? I've no idea. So, I'm going to head down. I'm going to grab the... Well, I'll see you down there, actually. I'm going to just hook this up to the auger. I'm going to grab a load of potatoes. I'm not going to buy too many potatoes, and I'm not going to take over the auger straight away. I'm going to get a potato planter going first, and then decide at the rate it's sort of working through the potatoes we've got, um, how much potato do I think I'm going to have to buy? Because I've done it with poplars before, I've done it with all sorts of stuff, where you overestimate or completely underestimate how much you're going to need. I don't want to buy 50,000 litres of you know, potatoes, and I only need 30. I mean, at the end of the day, I've got no potatoes I can sell, so you know, it doesn't really matter either way around. Or we could do something with potatoes. Um, that was why I did my own little field. I thought, well, I'd do a small field, plenty there. Or I suppose the knock-on effect now is, whether I do the potato planting now, myself or not, that field will end up with potatoes in it. Can you imagine doing the potato harvest on that field? <laughs> no difference to the sugar beet one. Oh, I've driven away here now, so it doesn't matter. Absolutely bonkers it's going to be. So, let's get that moved out of the way for a second. Get a load of potatoes bought. Like I said, I'm not going to go too mad. I'll get a few, and then we'll kind of go from there. We do get to use some different gear, which is rather cool. So if you're new to my channel, you're new to watching this stuff and you haven't seen it or you don't know anything about it, um, if we go into here under our pallets, I've got a few different pallet mods installed, I think. Yeah, Bible pallets, farm supply mods, here we go. Um, yeah, all of them 1,000 to buy for 5,000 litres. And this came, it was fairly late on FS19, I think, because I remember using uh, buying a whole trailer load of stuff on Attingham. Uh, chicken feed, mixed ration, pigs. Did I go past the potatoes? Please tell me I didn't dream that. There we go. Potato pallet. So, um, you can't buy these in like eights or anything like that, so. Well, I bought six. Six to start off with. I'll load this up first. Take it out to the field and get it going. And then we'll load the rest up. Once I've got a kind of idea, I mean, I'm not going to know for definite, obviously. It's going to be a, a, a guess, of course. It's going to be a ballpark idea, but this doesn't hold a huge amount. But if you're going to use the um, potato planters, if you weren't aware, again, you might be completely new to the game. You can fill up the potato planters with either seed or potatoes. And a lot of potato planting is done with potatoes on the previous year's crop. So as they start to get the eyes on them, um, they go into the ground and then... Yeah. If you weren't aware, you may well have been. If you were, brilliant. thousand is cool okay so i'm going to take this out to field 13. when we get to field 13 we open this out because previous jobs have been um cultivating fertilizing and sowing and we've got fairly good sized gear for that um this is going to be <laughs> rather telling when we open this out and realize we're going to be like a small boat on a big ocean uh it's going to be interesting and we do have, I think, a couple of fields of we got fields of cotton. I can't remember now. Did we put any cotton in after the last harvest? Because the cotton harvest I did last season worked brilliant. They worked out really well. Um, I've got no clothes come through yet. They seem to be taking a long time in the production. Stuck into the wall. Of course, I am. That was brilliant. I don't need to worry about crop. I can just skirt on into the field. We'll come to field 13. Oh, I'm so happy the controller's fixed. I've been, I've been going. I mean, it was weird how we would do it intermittently. 
and you would get that bit of creep on the cursor. Then it got to a point everything I was trying to do, you know, I'd, I'd be talking and it would just, while I was doing something, the, the, the camera angle was gradually dropping or going up or, you know, or you were trying to take a screenshot and you'd get the perfect position and it would drop or, you know, it's like, ah. Oh. And I thought, well, maybe it's the game. And I thought, no, it can't be. It can't be the game. It's got to be the controller. So, uh, glad I swapped it out. Oh, I, while I'm doing this, I want to say a massive shout out to Mark. Well, Mark and Dave, actually. Um, Mark and Dave are two guys that um, have been friends for the, of the channel for a long, long, long time. Actually, we're not going through the edge. I'm going through this way. Um, both of whom are, um, I mentioned all the different moderators and people in the last episode, they're moderators on my YouTube stuff. So when people leave comments on my, on my videos, they'll often go through, have a read through the comments and just take out ones that are a little bit, you know. Some of them are spam, you know, you just sometimes get spam comments and they'll go through and take them all out. Um, and they, they do a fantastic job and again they're kind of behind the scenes guys they don't ask for anything want for anything they just they just do it to help and I just want to say thank you to Mark and Dave for doing that so as I found before oh, I did my own. this doesn't need to be turned on just drop down and what we'll see now is uh, I've got a funny feeling we're going to spend a fair bit of money on seed but not anywhere near as much as I would have done. Now, again, had I had a load of potatoes left over from a previous potato harvest I'd done myself, doing this now wouldn't be costing me a penny because I could just put my potatoes I've got left over in here. I say it wouldn't be costing me a penny. Whilst I would have the potatoes there, I could be selling them or using them for this. But that said, with that farm supply pack, it's still one of the cheapest, other than free, um, the cheapest options I've got. But the scary thing is when you go like that. Um, yeah. But to be fair, once I've gone round a couple of times and I can set it off on its own, I'll only just have to come back to it with the auger and just top up every time it needs topping up. We don't, I mean, say we don't seem to be going through it too quickly. Um, what I'll have to do is let this tank run out completely, then have a look at the map. And try and gauge, you know, and again, it is a really rough estimate. But just try and gauge how much of the field we've covered with one full tank. One full tank was 8,000 litres. And then kind of just extrapolate from that where we think we're going to be. Um, it's not, I mean, I say it's not an exact science. It probably could be an exact science. You could probably work it all out and do it mathematically and get it absolutely precise. I will just ballpark it and then we'll go from there. Sometimes you get it absolutely bang on. And when you do a video and people say, oh, how do you do that? <laughs> I've been doing this for a long time and I'm an expert. The truth? Absolute luck. Blind luck. Um, sometimes you're so far off, it's horrifying. And you're either left that you've got to buy so much more seed than you thought, or you've got so much left over. And again, like I'll, I'll cite poplars. Planting poplars, I'm a nightmare. You know, it's a two, is it 2,000 litre pallet of poplars? And you buy one and think, well, yeah, it's poplars and it won't go very far. And you start going and the pallet goes and goes and goes and goes. You're thinking, mm, OK, I bought four pallets of these. <laughs> what am I going to do with the rest of them? I think I did the same on six ashes. I'm sure I had a load left over. I was thinking about whether I to do poplars on here. We could do wood chip bales. Um, like poplar baling problem is the wood chips if you wood chip them it's great it's a great thing to do don't get me wrong I've always been an advocate of, of doing all the different jobs and or during a let's play trying to do as many different things as you can but it only kind of works particularly well if you've got good prices for these things if the prices are really really poor you do have to weigh up and ask yourself like for me doing this job here it's a big job, it's a lot of work, it's going to take a while. But like I said, once I've got a worker going, I can go a bit more hands-off and go and get some other work done. Just come back to it every now and again when I need to. I don't have to be here doing it the whole time. Um, and the payout is brilliant. So even if I haven't got any other jobs to do, but I might have other things I need to do, 
bike editing or looking through comments or whatever. I'm gonna, I can have it chugging away in the background. Um, I'm going to carry on going round, and now we're on the other side. You can see uh, just the, the task at hand. I will let this go round, and then I'll set the worker off. Then I'll have a bit of a gauge. It's always a little bit harder when you've just done around the outsides because trying to gauge what kind of percentage of the field you've done when you've only done a strip around the outside is a little bit harder to do. Um, but we'll have a look. I mean, just looking now, we're just under 5,000 litres. We've used 3,000 already. We haven't done a complete circuit yet. No. One thing I hadn't anticipated <laughs> was the fact that I brought the auger bag alongside the, the um, potato bags and it won't auto load. You can't kind of just press L3 and they load on. So I brought over the uh, tele handler with the bag handler uh, and I've had to put a weight on it because they're 5,000 litres. Um, it's a bit heavy. As you can see, even with the smaller weight on, I'm pushing the limits of this. Um, so what I'll be doing is, uh, let's tip that right back, so it's from there. Got there first. And I'll load them on. And then even, even having to do it this way, for what it's cost me for the potatoes, doesn't matter. It's all good. So we'll get those on now. Um, the reason I'm here is because... Where are we? I've done, I haven't done completely two runs around the field yet, and we ran out. So two runs around the field was 8,000 litres. <laughs> um, I can see this is going to cost me a fair bit of money, but because of what we're going to make, even if, you know, we'll see what we end up spending. How many pallets did I buy? I can't remember now. What we've spent already. I'll check back when I edit. I'll try and keep a tally of how much we've spent on potatoes, and then we'll deduct that from what we make on the on the contract for the sewing. But we still should do all right. Um, we'll see. I suppose that's all we can do, isn't it? <laughs> um, and I think what I'm going to do is actually fully load this um, this auger wagon. I think it's probably going to be the best bet. So I'll, I'll get some more. I think. So I'll see up the field. We'll overload this into the city. Now I hope that's going to work. I, I, I thought that would be a kind of given that, that would work. This this may turn out to be an absolute disaster if the if the uh, the auger won't overload. I mean that's kind of when you do seed and fertilizer, that's what they're for. So this is just a different type of seed, isn't it? It should work. I don't see why it wouldn't, but. You never can tell. I'm also starting to think now with the scale of the size. Was it, it was six pallets I bought, wasn't it? Um, this holds 24,000 litres. I've got 22, so rather than buy another one and put 2,000 litres in, I've just waited. I'm beginning to think I should have gone for the larger augers. Um, because of the just, yeah. The monumental task ahead. Um, I don't know if this will automatically unload into there or whether I need to overload. There we go. Ah, oh, look at that. Absolutely perfect. Very happy with that. Pipe in. I move that into the middle of the field. I mean, to be fair, it only cost me 1000 and something to lease this, didn't it? I could sell a load of my sugar, like four pallets of sugar, and lease another one. Maybe should I do that? Or is that a bit over the top? Once I've emptied this, should I get a larger one? Save me on going backwards and forwards. Um, that one's just 50,000 litres, and I'm starting to think I might need it. Well, that's tracked. I wish that's a lease. 1,785, why did I go for that? I think I might, you know. Give it some thought. It's nice and cheap to lease, though, isn't it? 
Right, so I'm going to carry on. Uh, get this going. Uh, once I've done my second run round, I'm going to let it go up and down. Because two runs round should give me enough for turning circle. Again, what I'll do is um, gauge it. Again, this is just kind of... If, if you're wondering, you know, how do I go about it? How should you go about it? You pick whatever works for you. Some people will just go up and down, up and down. Then they'll do the headlands. I've always gone round and done the headlands first. And then it gets... Because that way... You don't have workers necessarily going off into the trees. If they go right side to the field and they turn around, if you've got collisions on the hedges or you've got trees, then get caught up. So I like to put myself a nice border in. That way when the um, cedar planter gets to the border, it will turn around using the border. Now I know in the real world, you don't want to be driving over what you've already seeded, really. So you would do your up and down, then you would put your border in afterwards. Um, it's just the way I do it to make it easier if you're going to hire workers. So what I'll do is I'll set the worker off and on its first pass up and down, when it gets to the end, I'll look and see how it turns. If it doesn't turn particularly well or it needs more runoff space, I'll do another run round and do another ring round the outside to give myself a thicker border and then go again. It's just kind of... Again, how you go about it, you, can, you know, people will kind of work out their own methods or their own way they prefer um, and they'll go for that. Some people will go ultra realistic and they'll do exactly how farmers do it on the field. Um, and there, then there's that there's a load of people that just aren't that bothered. They'll just set it off and don't really think too much about it. So, so raise that. There's nothing you've got to remember here, so you haven't got to remember anything. You don't have to. Is because that sweeps out, you've got a bit of a kick out. What I'm going to do is set it off in that little notch first to go up and down until I reach this point and then it's straight up and down uh, and then until we get to the other side of the field then we've got a few <laughs> look at the size of this <laughs> oh dear um, just think of the money though although I'm now thinking what am I going to buy with it um, up until this point there's always been something else on the horizon there was another production chain building I needed to buy or I was you know I suppose I might sell the Magnum and get a new something big I don't know maybe we could what do you reckon this isn't going to be as good of an indication simply because the um, border here is at an angle but we should still get a, a rough kind of guide and to start off with there's going to be a lot of a lot of turns again something farmers want to they try to avoid as much as possible they want to try and get the longest runs they possibly can um, every time you've got your vehicle not in operation and turning, you're using fuel and you know, and you're not doing anything productive. So, what's that doing? So you want to try and get these fiddly bits done as quickly as possible. So I'm worried, worried now. Actually, no, it's using the border. I was just worried it was going to go too far because we've got trees along this side as well. And then what should happen is it will line itself up and it will then get cracking. So once that's gone, and I'm happy that I've, I've given myself enough of a border, I'm going to go off, we'll get the first size, we'll get that going over on field 17, wasn't it? And then um, maybe we'll get some, I'll release another one of the machines and we'll get some sugar beet cut because I want to get more sugar production underway. Seems to be working all right. Now we'll check and see here. So I don't know whether or not, once I get it going up and down, I might put another strip at the top and bottom of the field, not necessarily on the edges, but that's working all right. It's, it's, it's turning okay, not going to the hedges or anything. Right, happy with that. And then, what, like what I've said, I'll, what I'll, um, I'll gauge now how the rest of that trailer empties. We've got 14,000 left in there, so it's another full one of these and another um, sort of three quarters, isn't it? Yeah, that's right. It's eight, yeah. And we'll see how far we've got, and then I think I might lease a bigger one. I mean, it's all just to save me time. You know, for the cost of 1,700, 1,800 to lease the bigger one, that means I haven't got to go backwards and forwards as many times. I don't know how many times I have to go backwards and forwards. It's not like it's far to go. I could go backwards and forwards, and in the real world, yeah. 
that's what farmers would do. Of course they do. I was watching Tom Pemberton again the other day. Um, I, I, watch, I watch all of his videos, so I say watching him again. I watch him all the time whenever he posts anything. And they were doing their muck spreading. Um, they had a big old heap. Um, and they were they were loading up with their, their uh, small... They've got a little uh, Manitou telehandler. Um, and they had two bunning uh, muck spreaders running. One on a John Deere and one on their Hurleyman. And the muck spreaders, I think, I don't know how many loads, how many bucket loads were they were putting into it? But they were backwards and forwards and backwards and forwards and backwards and forwards and backwards and forwards. Because that's what farmers do. <laughs> In game, we just go, right, get something bigger, <laughs> get a bigger capacity, get a bigger tractor, let's run something bigger, then we haven't got our backwards and forwards as much. And that's fair enough if you've got the money to do that. And then, like I said before, if you've got the yard, farmyard to support that, if you can financially afford it, then yeah, fine, go bigger. You know, if, if it saves you time backwards and forwards, you're saving time, you're saving money. But then there's the initial cost of whatever you're doing. So it's all kind of, it's all stuff that needs to be weighed up. This is working fine. Let's go and get the fertiliser sorted out, shall we? <laughs> Come on, the John Deere. We can do it. We are pulling 10,000 litres, I guess. Yeah, you can do it, of course you can. So, 42,000... 42,000 metres, yeah, 42,000 metres spread on this. We'll do the field of one pass. Boom, gone. 42 metres spread on this. It's going to make life much, much easier. I've just suddenly realised what I've done. I think I've left the cultivator up here. <laughs> yeah, I think actually, literally, as we turn in, uh, the cultivator is going to be sat right there. Do I need to be careful I don't drive into it? There it is. Let's get that back. <laughs> it was like just down tools. It's dinner time, I'm off. Uh, we are on this field, aren't we? Field 17. Why is field... Oh, 20 was... Um... What did I take on a contract on field 20? Oh, it was harvesting soybean. I forgot all about that. Right, so what I've got a gauge now in my head. And look at this, it's 42 metres. Where do I want to be? I'm just thinking about... Is that about right or is that too far out? We are about to find out. That was about spot on. We'll take that. So this is going to make life so much quicker and easier for doing fertilising. But obviously, there's a, the flip side of that is how quickly we'll get through it. Um, 10,000 litres should last us. Liquid fertiliser I've found to be very efficient. But we are doing big fields here, so it was always a fair bit. But again, because of what we're saving now in fertiliser, you know, the whole tank in here cost me 2000 For fertiliser, that's insane. That's, that's an incredible price. So I'm maximising profits. I sort of do turn that off now. We're on the right field. Oh, the same thing with this. We'll get around the outside done. Um, that'll be a big chunk of it done already. And then we'll get the, get a worker cracking on. And then, um, do I then move on to, I think I'll, I'll lease another one of those augers and we'll do the beet cutting. I was going to, I was going to lease the, the, um, the beet ninja, the, um, flegal trailer that's been converted. And I was going to do a little thumbnail of me becoming a ninja or something. But, uh, oh, farm dog's happy, so. Can you hear him, can you? Um. But in all honesty, the sugar beet cutting pack, which changes loads of those um, auger wagons into cutters, I think will make more sense. Man, coffin fits today, not good. But we're doing all right actually around here. I mean, to be fair, what we, I can't remember now what we've... You think how long I was doing it for. And it's, this is what I mean about... Because I'm an old man now. Um, I'm sure the spread of it was 32 metres, wasn't it? It wasn't a 36 boom on that bird too. It was, I'm sure it was 32. So we're up 10 metres per pass. That's going to bug me now. Hang on. Let's turn it off for a sec. 
<laughs> that is really going to bug me. Um, that was under sprayers, wasn't it? I'm sure it was 32. I have to check. Just for my own sanity, I have to check. Was it that one we had? 33 metres. Oh, okay. Yeah, 33. 32, 33. So we're up a bit. What's going on? Come on. There we go. We really are multitasking now. I've got <laughs> the fertilising contract on field 17 is complete. I just need to uh, collect on that. Now, the first six pallets I bought, I've finished using. So that's six grand. It cost me 30,000 litres of seed or potato. Let's just put it like that. So our sowing contract is sitting at 32% complete, not quite 33. So we're nearly a third of the way through having spent six grand. So the theory now is to get to 100% sown on this field, I'm going to have to spend another 12. So it'll be 18 grand in total, and we'll get just under 100 grand for the contract. A little bit less because I borrowed, obviously, the, the tractor and the planter. So actually, it's not going to work out too bad. Right, fertilising contract is done. Uh, that contract on field 20, I've taken the try on over. That's being done at the moment, 52% complete. And I also leased a mulcher. And I've got the uh, one of the John Deere's mulching field 23 because I completely forgot about field 23. All the other things we've been doing and it just didn't even cross my mind. So I've bought another five pallets because obviously it's 24,000 litres. 25,000 litres is five pallets. So I've got 1,000 still sitting over at the store. Um... So I'll probably have to do another five and then potentially two more on top to complete the contract. Um, so we're about a third of the way through. What time is it now? Ten to nine. It's not too bad. Put the pipe back in again. Move that out of the way. So again, I'm going to let this go. What I'm probably going to do at this point then is go now and let's say if we're going full on multitasking, get as many jobs done as we can. And bearing in mind... Yeah, we did the honey thing, that's already done. We went and looked at the cows. We've already... I, do, I do need to mulch the uh, grapevine. We're going to go and get the beet shredder now, beet chopper. Which is just going to be another one of these. Um, but, but obviously the modified version of. Uh, so I'll see you over there, just over by the sugar mill, in a minute. Uh, actually, what I'll probably do is leave this here. I'll go and grab a different one with this tractor. And... Uh, Farm dog loves beet chopping. He, he's so excited. Can you tell? 
I went for the Bergman RRW 500, 200, 500. Uh, this is over 50,000 litres. I'm pretty sure I left, was it 100,000 litres of sugar beet in here? Um, that's interesting. Why won't that let me... You're kidding me. That can't be right. It will only let you take it from a sugar beet harvester. I'm not getting anything coming up. Do I try and fold dual wagon first? That's worrying. Oh, there we go. How weird. That time fold. Okay. Whew. Had a panic then. This wasn't cheap to lease, but again, the money we're making from the various different contracts is absolutely fine. So it should just be two loads. And I'm just dumping it right here in front of where we are. And um, what should happen, because this is the um, the the adjusted, the modified version, fifty thousand seven hundred. Um, what we do now, when we unload it, pipe out, then unload it, should chop it, shouldn't it? <laughs> pipe out. And there we go. Just chopping the sugar beet that we put in. So the sugar beet in, chop sugar beet out. Much quicker than using the, the small bucket that we did before. There are a few different options available for this. And um, this mod changes loads of the auger wagons, not just the, these ones, but changes pretty much all of them. So any of the auger wagons you can change into a sugar beet chopper, which should mean as well. Then if we go back up to here and we go back down to our sugar mill. We have now got sugar beet cut, which I can now turn back on again, which should improve our sugar production again. So what we'll do is back under there once more. Let's get it just right. And like I say, even though this cost me, I'm sure it was about seven grand to lease, is it, is it meant I can do this in two quick runs of just, well, 50,000, just under 50,000 it'll be. And I'm pretty sure the sugar I've got on hand at the moment, if they're selling for over a thousand of pallet, which they are at the moment, I've got four thousand, over four thousand, five thousand in payment for the sugar that's sitting there already. So, yeah, it covers the cost, and it, you know, I can just up the production and get cracking. I'm pretty sure my potato planter is going to be nearly empty again in a minute, so I'm going to whiz over and sort that. The harvest contract I'm filled. 20 is nearly done. 80%. Got some other sewing contracts there we could take on. But for the time being, I think we're right. And the mulcher is continuing on field 23, so it's all good. And once that's done, I'll take that back. All is good in the world. How are we looking? 100,000 litres. There we go. That should keep us chugging along for a bit longer. Uh, we want to do pipe in and then fold all the wagon. Then all is over because we're just by our field. I don't think it's stopped yet or not. Probably. I have to go through the hedge. Um, no, it's still going. And I'll swap over onto the auger wagon that's got the potatoes in. Oh, actually, should have gone along the lane, otherwise I'm going through hedges, aren't I? Ignore that. Ignore the hedges. I'll go down. Don't want to drive across the crop. I can do it. Makes no difference. But I don't want to drive across the bit I've already planted. So I guess now, I think the soybean that I'm harvesting on field 20. I'm not going to keep any of it. There's not going to be a huge amount. I'm not going to get a full trailer load. I think I've taken the 70,000 litre trailer over. We're not going to get a full trailer load. So what I'm going to have left over is going to be like three, four thousand 4,000 litres, if, if that. So what I'm going to do is just take it to the sale point and we'll just dump the lot. Contract will complete and we'll get a little bit of extra money, but not a huge amount. There you go. Tank is empty. Perfect time to switch over. I just haven't thought about how long this episode is. Um, I have to have a fiddle around during editing. So I will probably now see you much later. 
when the oh, I've got a lot of choice here, have I? Left my, yeah, that's what I said about going when you do a border, you don't really leave yourself any room. Um, yeah, we're about 40, just over 40 percent complete on here, so nearly halfway. What time is it now? 12 minutes past nine. Hasn't been too bad, has it? All these bits of equipment have really helped as well. Uh, pipe out. Uh, that can be turned off. Let's go! Well, it's 25 to 12, and we are done. I know there's a little bit left here, not a huge amount. Contract is complete. <laughs> Here's the frustrating thing. Um, I had done, first load was six pallets I bought. Then I bought five, then I bought five. So 16 pallets, 16 grand we'd spent on seed. So when we were getting close to the end, I ran out. Well, let's go and buy another pallet, which I did. So 17 pallets, 17 grand, 85,000 litres of potatoes. Frustrating thing was, that last pallet, we literally used, what, 119 litres of it? So, I mean, it's only a grand, and I can't unload this, unfortunately. But, we are done here on field 13 as you've just seen if I put it on the thumbnail uh, on the thumbnail on the, on the editing I also had a fertilizing contract pop up for field 18 I did that as well while this was chugging away so it's been quite a lucrative morning I mean same morning day but, um, yeah maybe I should have had it on times two for it to be more realistic to plant a field this size yes it would have taken a long time especially with one vehicle I'm just playing within the realms of, of what's you know what's in game Normally I'm doing a very big job like this so I can get maximised what I can do in a... Because the thing you've got to remember as well, I'm running um, two-day seasons. So, well, I suppose, yeah, what, one day is 15 days of real life, I suppose. If it took me the entire day to do this, would it take me 15 days to plant this field? It wouldn't. So I guess I'm just trying to balance it out as best I can, you know, if I can. So yeah, we've got this little bit left over. I mean, the, the farm supply pack is absolutely, you know, it's an absolute godsend, isn't it? Let's be honest. Um, but 85,000 litres of potatoes, though, that's a fair old bit to put on that field. Um, this worked brilliantly. I didn't end up going for the larger one. I just stuck, it, stuck out with this. Um, and it might have went back three times, so it didn't matter, did it? It wasn't really much of a problem. Um, and we good then i think 602 grand at the moment and we can complete on that contract it's going to pay us 99,312 um lease cost oh i'm being reimbursed oh that's right i'm being reimbursed for the seed that's in the potato because i forgot I, when i did my own planting i leased a planter this is for a contract so i'll get reimbursed for that look at that though that's quite scary isn't it reimbursement 4173 because it's treating it as seed there's over 4,000 litres of seed in there um that five thousand litres cost me a grand so i've made money just on the seed alone <sighs> oh, i know it feels bad but not that bad so this should take us over seven hundred thousand i'll have a look at whether we're going to do those or not 
701,415. We have had a very, very lucrative day. I'm going to take this back now. The farmer has collected his gear. We'll take this back. We don't need this anymore. Um, and I suppose we've got to start looking. What are we going to spend the money on? What are we going to do? What should we get? Answers on a postcard. What do you reckon? Do we do we get a big old? Do we get a big tractor? I know we've got the hmm, we've got the Magnum, but I'm wondering whether or not we should sell it now. Get something else. I don't know. Just an idea. Just thinking out loud. Uh, I'll go back across the top of the field to the gate, and I'll take this back. So there we go. The uh, biggest potato plant ever. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, please give us a like. If you don't subscribe yet, please do. If you want to leave a comment, feel free. And if you want to share this video, then please be my guest. Whatever you should choose to do. Thanks for watching.